I also have enough coverage here. So on the other side here, if I see I have too much blank spot here, so I will try to train a cane. So here is a, I cut the whole thing here that to become more like a Yes, that is. Oh, yes, it is. That's what mostly I do. In my vineyard, I try to do at least 50% uh, cane and 50% uh, uh, spur pruning. Oh, what happens if you keep doing spur pruning, your fruit zone keep growing higher and higher every year. So you have to keep renewing the cordon. And uh, that's what I, I do. Like a, this is a already two, three year old cordon, which you can see the spur next year we here and here and here. And if we don't retrain anything new, then uh, they will keep climbing up. So this year we did it this side. We can train the cane this side, but uh, I leave this one here. Kind of thinking next year with some good cane to come out from here, you can get rid of this uh, hole. In our earlier videos on this vineyard, we talk about a different kind of pruning and uh, we also do combination pruning in this vineyard. One side is spur and the other side of uh, uh, cane. So this is a really good example of fruit size in, uh, in cane pruning and uh, spur pruning. This plant on this side have a cane and this side is uh, all spur. If you look at the cluster size, that's uh, you can see the difference. Look at this cluster coming from the cane and this second cluster and uh, this is coming from the spur. So in spur pruning cluster size is always a bit smaller than uh, the cane pruning as you can see here. So see this is quite a big cluster if you look at this one or this one they're small. So to achieve both quality and quantity we try to do both this. Uh, both uh, uh, methods and we also doing study on that uh, which will be more uh, feasible for future for us should we go to cane or should we stick with spar pruning or we do both so uh, it's our second year in that and uh, by next year we will know what works better for us so